I will put the games in a logical order, as it's easier for me to review them that way, rather than in a chronological order. Ok, so the first one would be Call of Duty 1, and while playing you can see why this game was such a success. I mean, for 2003, this game rocks. It's a very good World War II shooter. And if you are a fan of Call of Duty games, I really recommend you play this one too. As you should know from where the franchise started, and that the franchise started strong, and how many improvements came with each year. Even if they are not that observable, from game to game they still exist and improvements came big time. You can see that from Call of Duty 1. And you can also see that Call of Duty 1 was already a rock solid game that is very fun, engaging and you should check it out. Call of Duty 2 amplifies the experience the first game created even more. The magic of the first Call of Duty games was to engage you emotionally into the action that's going on on screen. You start to feel that adrenaline. Oftentimes it's so intense that you forget that this game is linear. You just fight your way out of trouble and move to the next checkpoint and just don't, don't realize that it's actually linear. You always feel like you should go that way. And these spaces are pretty big to feel that, to, to give you the impression of free room. And the special effects, the details, the extreme stuff that happens and stuff that will kill you from the first bullet or drop off something heavy on you are creating a sensory overload. You want to play more and it's no wonder, the games are badass. You want to play more, be part more of the action and this is the charm of these games. They engage you. That 8 hour campaign flies in no time when you are so intensely pulled into the game. Also Call of Duty 2 is the first Call of Duty game with regenerative health. In the first one you had med kits to collect to replenish your health. In this one your health regenerates automatically. In Call of Duty 3 game companies switched. This game was not made by Infinity Ward, the game company that produced Call of Duty 1 and 2, but Treyarch. Call of Duty 3 doesn't get you in campaigns around the globe like it did in the first two, but rather sticks to smaller places. The center of the game is the Normandy Breakout. The chapters are told chronologically through 14 single player missions that span the 88 days leading up to the liberation of Paris. Uh, Paris. Players fight as the Americans, British, Canadians and Polish. This game again gets you engaged into the story. You see your comrades fall, teaching you that not every hero gets through the day. This game looks stunning. The graphical updates set the bar way higher than its predecessors. And the jaw-dropping moments it, it gets you in are amazing, making it an unforgettable experience. And as innovations, this game brings the ability to throw grenades back at the enemy. Call of Duty World at War is actually the fifth game in the series. But I'm talking about it here because this game ends the World War II Call of Duty games. It's very similar in quality to the other games. And this game is one of the most brutal ones. Right from the start you see an execution. Enemies come from everywhere. The lush jungles are filled with hidden soldiers, and in Russia things are not a walk in the park either. In this game you feel that war means actually survival. It's not as tactical as the other ones. It shows war in a darker tone, in darker colors, and it provides the usual monster experience, so it's a title you should definitely check out. And now, one of the best trilogies in gaming. Ok, there are plenty of trilogies in the best category, luckily. And this one is among them. It's the Modern Warfare Trilogy. As the game states, it's modern, so no more World War II. 
but the game takes place in our times, well roughly now. And these three games are so epic that you can't let your hands off of them. I mean, I wanted to record like 10 minutes per game, because I thought that if I'm going to talk 2 minutes about each game, then I don't really need to show far away sequences, but even if I said to myself that I want to play only 10 minutes of each game, in Modern Warfare 1, I played half of the game in one go. Modern Warfare 2. M Modern Warfare 2, 2. And Modern Warfare 3 had luck because I had to leave the house and managed to not play that much. This trilogy is epic. You will encounter a lot of memorable characters like Captain Price, Soap McTavish, Simon Ghost Riley, General Shepard and more. And again, the game engages you. Not only that your surrounding is flashy and something epic is always going on in each scene, but the game mechanics and gameplay are engaging too and you feel badass while playing. Even if you suck, you still feel good. And as I said, this trilogy is memorable. I will never forget how in Modern Warfare 3 the Eiffel Tower collapses. Or when you play in Chernobyl in Modern Warfare 1. The trilogy is really epic. You should try it if you haven't already. And after this trilogy, they nailed another one. The Black Ops games. In the first one, you are Mason and are being held captive to extract information from you. So you go into your thoughts and try to remember what happened. And not only that again many epic moments will await, but the end will leave you shocked. Black Ops 2 is the sequel and is set in the year 2025, but it has some sequences from the past too. So the first game, Black Ops 1, took place during the first Cold War, and this one happens during the second Cold War. I know that we didn't have the second Cold War, but in the game there is one. You play as David Mason, the son of Alex Mason, the previous game's, the previous game's protagonist. Also in this game your actions will have an impact on the story, so that you will end up in one of the multiple endings the game has, so watch out what you do in the game. If you ever find this in a store and expect to play the Black Ops 3 campaign, you're wrong. This game doesn't contain the campaign. It has the multiplayer and the zombie expansion, but no campaign. As a soothing for your burn, that you bought a game that had Black Ops 3 written all over it, you can download the first Black Ops game as a digital download and play that campaign, but you can't play the Black Ops 3 campaign, which is on the cover. So if you ever stumble upon this one and want to play the campaign of Black Ops 3, just know that there is no campaign on the PS3 and Xbox 360. It came without one. Call of Duty Ghosts had a great campaign in my opinion, and the story was left in a cliffhanger. But well, you see my fellow people who liked Call of Duty Ghosts, it wasn't that liked by the rest, apparently. They call it bland and boring, mostly because of the multiplayer. And about the campaign, they say just that it's okay, but not outstanding. I, I really liked the game, and I would like to see the sequel to it too. And Advanced Warfare is the type of game that not only is a good game, but it's a good movie too. The motion capture is top notch. You even see actors Troy Baker and Kevin Spacey play as characters in the game. And in many cutscenes their integration in the game is so good that it feels like a movie. Also the bad guy in this game is very likable. In gameplay you get an exosuit. So the gameplay gets more futuristic. You can jump really high with it or, cl or use cloak or use other abilities, and even the weapons are futuristic, like grenades that mark with red the enemies, or some sort of sound bazooka. They are interesting. Overall the gameplay is fun, and 
it's as good as past experiences of Call of Duty. I like this game too, both in story and in gameplay. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitch, Instagram, or Discord, I'll have the links to those in the video description. Also, if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.